Pai and welcome to Drive Smart Training, where you'll discover and consider really important decisions when buying your car. Now, for most people, their first biggest purchase is a car. And while this can be a very exciting process, it's important to first analyze how much you can afford and are willing to pay, as well as doing your research on the car that you intend to buy. And things that you would look at are reviews on the type of cars, What's a trading value like and how does it compare to the asking price that you're looking at? How fuel efficient is the car? How often does it require a service and what's the cost of that service? And if it's second hand, has it been in any accidents, etc. Now we've provided this training for you so that you can work out all of the costs associated with running a car and what it will actually cost you overall before you go out and buy it, especially if you're taking out a loan. So let's take a look at the spreadsheet and go through it step by step. So the first step is to establish the cost of the car. Now there are many different ways that you can purchase a car. You can buy them from a dealer and if you're buying a second hand car you can also buy them through private sale, at an auction or online. So always remember to negotiate and bargain down the price of a car, especially when you're buying from a dealership because they factor in a profit margin. And take a close friend or family member with you who is great at negotiating. You know, a friend of mine took her uncle to a dealership when she bought her car and he saved her almost $5,000. So it's definitely worth doing. And not only can they help you get a great price, but a second opinion is also very useful. And it often prevents you from feeling overwhelmed or pressured by the whole experience. So once you've worked out how much you're prepared to pay for a car, then type this amount in the first box titled Purchase Price. If you have any funds that you've saved up to put towards the car, so say for example you've been saving for a car in your next goals account, then type this amount in the next column under Savings. Also, if you have a car that you intend to trade in, then include an estimate of what you believe you will receive. These days, you can go online and check out websites such as redbook.com.au and they'll provide you with figures on what your car is worth. So you don't actually have to go into a dealership and get them to inspect the vehicle just for this purpose of this exercise. Also, remember that in most cases, if you trade your car in, you're most likely going to receive a lower amount for it than if you sell it privately because the car dealer also then has to make a profit on the car. So it may be worthwhile actually selling it privately. Now, obviously, if the amount that you want to spend on a car is bigger than your savings and the trade-in, then this is going to mean that you'll need to borrow a particular amount. Now, it's advisable that the lower the loan amount, the better off financially you're going to be because you're not going to be paying as much interest. Now, I'd like you to meet Kim. She's a 19-year-old university student. She works part-time and she's living with her parents. When Kim got a license, she started driving her aunt's car around while she was out of the country. Now, it's quite an old car and her aunt understood that she wouldn't receive much money if she sold it, so she decided that she'd give it to the family to use. Now, while Kim was quite happy driving this car, after about a year driving long distances up and down the coast on the weekends, her parents told her that they wanted her to buy a new car because they were worried that it would break down. So after looking around, they decided upon a Toyota Yaris as they were having a huge car sale at the time and you could actually buy a brand new one with all costs included for only $15,000. So by simply buying when the sale was on, they'd already saved over $5,000 already. While Kim did not have any savings up front, her parents told her that they were happy to contribute $5,000 to the cost of the new car because they did actually want her to buy it. So looking at Kim's figures in the calculator, she would put $15,000 as the purchase price because that's the total cost of the car. The savings is $5,000, which is her parents' contribution towards the car. And the trade-in value will be zero because they are actually going to keep that for other family members to use. Okay, so looking at step number two, borrowing the money and determining the monthly repayments. So as mentioned, buying a car with cash is the most preferred option because you won't pay any interest on the loan. But if you don't have the cash up front though, then borrowing the money to purchase is going to be your only option. Now you can borrow from a financial institution such as a bank, building society, credit union 
or you could have the car dealership arrange your finance for you. That's if they offer this type of service. Another option is that you could probably get a loan from a family member or a friend. In general, you'll be looking at taking out what's called a personal loan, and these loans are given to private individuals for personal use, such as the purchase of a motor vehicle, and the repayment periods vary from around one to five years. These loans do come with a higher interest rate in comparison to other loans, such as home loans, because no collateral is asked or given for the loan, and this is what's called an unsecured loan. Now, it definitely pays to shop around and see what loan best suits you and with whom. While dealer finance may be more convenient because you can sign up and drive away, you might end up paying more than what you need to, or you could be facing restrictive terms and conditions on the loan that you signed up for. So even paying an extra 0.5% interest can really add up over the life of the loan, so definitely do your sums. And here's some more tips to consider when you're looking at taking out a loan. Work out how much you can afford before going out and looking at cars. At least have a ballpark figure in mind. Research what is the best loan for you. So this means shopping around for the best deal by comparing interest rates, fees and penalty charges. Ensure that you only borrow as much as you need. So if possible, use as much of your own money or trade in or sell your old car so that the loan amount is as small as possible. Remember that the longer the life of a loan, so for example five years, the more interest that you'll end up paying. And before accepting and signing any loan documents, read the fine print to see what's covered. So once you've chosen the right loan for you, enter in the total loan amount that you'll be taking out. And remember to include stamp duty and any transfer fees that may apply, the annual interest rate, and also the length of the loan in months. And then this will calculate what your monthly repayments will be. So going back to Kim's situation, her parents offered to lend her the loan amount of $10,000 at a very cheap interest rate of only 3%. And this was because once again, they really wanted her to buy a car that they knew that she was going to be safe on the roads with. So it was agreed that she would pay back this loan over five years. So because it's in months, you'll notice that the length of the loan here is 60, which is five years by 12 months. This means that each month, Kim will be required to repay her parents back $179.69, approximately $180. So looking below this, you can also see what your total cost would be over the life of the loan. So in Kim's situation, over the, over the five years, she'll be paying $781.21 in interest. In total, it's going to cost Kim to buy a $15,000 vehicle, $15,781.21. Okay, moving on to step number three, other monthly expenses. Calculating and working out the monthly repayments for repaying the loan is only part of the cost when owning a car. So you should also look at the car's running and maintenance costs, such as fuel, services, tires, etc. Also look at the registration and insurance when working out what you can afford to spend on a car because these expenses will need to be forecasted each month. So one other expense that most people don't consider is the cost to join a motoring organisation membership such as RACQ in Queensland. Now while it does cost you money up front to join, so you've got your yearly membership, it can help you out in many ways such as when you, your battery goes flat or when you lock your keys in the car. So it could actually end up saving you money. So it's just another little thing to think about. Back to Kim's situation, we've put all of her monthly expenses in here, including her loan repayment to her parents of $180, and her total monthly expenses come to $397. So it's nearly $100 a week for having her car and for running it. And that brings us to step four, decision time. Now, looking at all of these figures and having them laid out in front of you, ask yourself the question, are you prepared to have this much money taken out of your pay each month for your car? Now, look at the Magnet Money Forecast Spreadsheet and place these figures under the Today's Essentials account and ask yourself, do these figures sit in your allocated 50 to 55% under the account? Now, if the answer is yes, then great, go and enjoy your car. 
Now this is Kim's Magnet Money Forecast spreadsheet. And as you can see, she's sitting around the 55%. So she's probably just on the end of the maximum of what she would be comfortable with. So if these figures don't sit in your allocated 50 to 55% under the Today's Essentials account, then ask yourself the question, what are you prepared to give up in order to buy this car and why? Because something has to give. Is it your entertainment expenses? Is it your clothing expenses? What is your discretionary spending? Keeping in mind that you still need to put in at least your 10% into your money magnet account. What is it that you're prepared to give? Now, if you if you find that you can move some money around and you can reduce some of your other expenses, then great, go and buy your car. But this will sort of help a, give you a really good wake up call as to what's going to happen because every month you're going to be forced to pay your repayments for the loan and also the cost to run the car. Now, another thing that we'll look at is what if you want to pay the loan off earlier than the term of the loan? So let's assume that you either received a pay increase or a lump sum from somewhere and you're considering using this money to put towards your car loan. So what you want to do is you want to use this extra payments calculator and fill in the appropriate boxes. So let's look at Kim's situation. We've got $10,000. The annual interest rate is 3%. The loan, this time we have to put it into years, so it's five years. We assume that the start date of the loan was the 1st of March last month, and she's got an extra $100 a month that she'd like to put on her loan. So you can see by putting that $100, this column here, extra payments, goes all the way down. Now, because I started the loan on the 1st of March, I'm actually going to take this out. So you can actually go in here now and play around with the figures. So I'm going to put zero because the month has already gone and she hasn't, she didn't pay that month. But 1st of April, yeah, let's say she's going to start in the 1st of May. So the extra payments will start there. As you can see here, it tells you that this is what she's currently paying. $179 a month and it's going to take her over 60 months to pay that off but by putting an extra $100 a month it's going to reduce it from 60 to 39 payments so she's actually going to pay $3,700 off quicker than what she would have and so her interest is going to only be $507.94 where I believe her repayments last time was about 700 and something so she saved quite a bit of money on the interest so as it's this if you scroll down you can have a look and see all the repayments right down to the end so by the 1st of May 2014 this loan will be paid off so as I said you can either put your additional repayments in here or you can just choose if you want to every now and then Oops. whenever you have a lump sum you can put them in as well and that concludes our drive smart training video now it's your turn underneath this video you'll see the two calculators used the first calculating your monthly repayments and the total monthly expenses and the second calculating the extra repayments so go ahead and enter in your own figures for yourself this is Nicole Clemo wishing you and your family health wealth and happiness